The following is a Stars and Strikes doubles rebroadcast featuring some of our most memorable programs. WNDS Sports and Tri-State Megabucks present Stars and Strikes Doubles. Stars and Strikes Doubles is sponsored in part by Somerville Lumber. Strikes Doubles is produced and conducted with the New Hampshire Hamilton Bowling Association. And now your hosts, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Hi, everybody, and welcome to our first championship week of the 1992-93 season here on Stars and Strikes Doubles. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. Uh, earlier today, we had our first qualifier get into the Tri-State Megabucks Singles Tournament of Champions, and at the end of this hour, we'll have our first doubles team as well. Absolutely. Comes from one of these two teams and uh, two... Uh, Tough teams going head-to-head. -head. Should be exciting. All right. Prize money on the line, too, of course. So $400 to the runners-up and $800 to the winners of this match. But, of course, more importantly, the trip in, uh, into next spring's Tournament of Champions. All right. Let's meet our two teams. First of all, our number two-seeded team. They won last week with a 365, beating Bob Whitcomb and Jack Sanek. First of all, from Lynn Mass, Neil Gosselin, and his partner from Ocean Park, Maine, Francis Bolio. Okay, Neil comes in averaging 127, the roll-off score 696, and Francis at 124, and the roll-off score exactly the same at 696. And, of course, uh, the 10 bowlers that advanced to uh, this show, the two guys that finished 1 and 2, made up our number one team. They've been sitting back for all these weeks and uh, waiting to see which team they will face, and now they know, so here they are. Our number one seeded team from Manchester, New Hampshire, Paul St. Pierre, and his partner from Southbridge, Mass., Steve Reno. Okay, Paul comes in averaging 170, uh, 121. His roll-off score, uh, fantastic, 714. Steve Reno at 128, and another 700 at 709. The only two 700s uh, in this final roll-off from Portsmouth. Uh, these two guys here are really hot. They certainly are. And of course, we got Neil at uh, through a 210 in the in the <laughs> semifinals too, or the final roll-off. So uh, the numbers are there. Just a matter if they brought the best bowling with them. All right, the prize money on the line and the spot in the tournament of champions as well. We'll come back and get this match started. Three strings, doubles competition. We'll do it right after this. Back we are, and here's the setup. Top two seeded teams set to go for the spot in the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions at the end of the year, and of course also the big prize money as well. We are left with our top two teams, Neil Gosselin and Francis Bolio, number two, Paul St. Pierre and Steve Reno, number one, and 14-23 is a pretty good score. That's, that's one of the higher scores that we've had. Of course, we're doing it differently now. The system is different with the one and two bowlers uh, combining, and then three and four, five and six on down the line. But 14-23 is a good combined score. Those Absolute. top two spots, yep. Both bowlers averaging over 140 for five games. This is Neil Gosselin starting things for us. Nice try at the 1-7-9-10. It'll be an eight box. Next week, of course, we will begin a brand new four-week series, five new teams. And uh, next Sunday at 12 noon, we'll begin a brand new series as well on Stars and Strikes at noon with five new bowlers in singles competition. Neil will have to settle for a six and a 14 opening pair. Steve Reno will kick it off for the team of Reno and St. Pierre. A 
Steve Reno, overall two and one here on the wins. All three of those appearances came in the same series in singles competition back in February and March of 91. And let's see, will Steve get the carry? No. Might have if that backwood wasn't there behind the six pin. The first time Steve appeared on TV 50, he threw a 445 to beat Glenn LeBlanc. He threw 148, 151, 146. The following week, he threw a 435 to beat Steve Lavery. And then in the third week, he rolled a 408, but that wasn't good enough to beat Steve Vatney, who rolled a 420 coming from behind and rolling a 151 in the third game. So three times Steve has been here in singles competition. He's rolled 400 or better all three times. And there's a spare in the second. First one of the match. And an early lead for our top seeded team. Here's Francis Bolia. Oh, the one, the eight, the nine go out. Spread Eagle plus the five pin in the middle. Last week we saw Jack Sanic make the Spread Eagle. With no wood, by the way. Eight box. It was this man who got the critical mark last week for his team in the eighth frame when they were in the process of losing a sizable lead and he bombs a strike right there in the fourth. Kicking out the four pin last. Been around that head pin most of the time last week and of course this week is still early but. Paul St. Pierre now. Oh, right on the head pin with that first ball. This is on the spare left by Steve Reno. It's an eight fill. It's a situation where you almost want to miss the two pin, clip the wood. Otherwise, it hasn't got a good angle. Of course, he's on the wrong side. I'll try to get the 10 pin for our 10 box. You saw that graphic a moment ago. Paul St. Pierre from Manchester does a lot of his bowling right in Manchester at King's Lanes. Paul and his wife, uh, Maureen, have three daughters. Jessica, who's 16, 12-year-old Amanda, and 7-year-old Nicole. Paul works uh, for New Hampshire Stamping. He's left with a 2-10 again. And this time, still no favorable wood. He needs the ball to come back. Well, I think something might have brushed that 10-pin. It wobbled a little bit, but wouldn't fall for him. And it's a nine box. Neil Gosselin is going to uh, take a ball and clear a piece of deadwood out of the channel on lane 30 before proceeding. And of course, it skips up into the lane and he'll have to reset. <laughs> you can only do that after you finish a box, then there's nothing there. And you don't have to worry about it. He's having trouble get clearing it out of there. <laughs> well, he's just not used to throwing them in the channel, you know? <laughs> Should have had me go down there and do it. Now Neil is working on the strike. Oh, and now we have a rack. The seven pin is missing. With no seven pin. Yeah, at least that's easy to see. Last week, where's Tom O'Brien? <laughs> Last week, if you missed it, uh, we had a uh, situation where after a box was completed, Tom O'Brien, who's one of the uh, frequent participants on the program, was here watching the taping and noticed that the eight pin was not in the rack when it re-racked for... Uh, Jack Sanic last week, and we had to replay a box. Now we have a clean rack, and Neil can work on the strike. Not quite. Not close to a spare. Cleared away the two, four, and seven, but left the five. We mentioned uh, King's Lanes a moment ago, and 
That reminds me of the La Rochelle family, which reminds me of the Hopkinton Fair. Yes, didn't we have a great time? We really did. I'm sure a lot of you folks uh, who went to the fair probably saw the Candlepin Bowling what, what are we calling it? The Candlepin Bowling Van or the display? Uh, yeah, yeah. The display van. <laughs> yeah, a little stub lane about so 20 feet. Actual working machine. Yeah, mini, uh, an actual mini bowling lane in a trailer with a real pin setter and an opportunity for folks at the fair to just try out Candlepin Bowling. I, boy, it was a big hit. At least it, really it, was. it seemed it. Yeah, the lower shells put a lot of work into the trailer. And word has it, we'll be back next year. Four horsemen left, plus the nine pin. Yes, for the spare, for Steve Reno. Second mark for the team. Steve has both of them. Since Steve has been here last, he and his wife Kathy have had a daughter, uh, have had a son rather, Steve, who's now a year and a half old. Steve works as a machine operator, does a lot of his uh, bowling at Bay Path. Steve from Southbridge, and it's just a seven box, so that kind of negates the spare. And I put an eight box. Sleeping. <laughs> so a fill here for Francis Bolia ties this thing up. An eight fill will tie it up. And he'll take seven. Just wants to lay off the lead here. Just hang <laughs> around a little bit. Triangle three, five, six left for Fran. Nope. One of our participating sponsors for this series on Stars and Strikes Doubles, the folks at Somerville Lumber, where you can, of course, get it right the first time at Somerville Lumber. Big supporters of Candlepin Bowling here on the Winds. Four horsemen right for Francis Bolia, plus the seven pin and some wood that may make it interesting. If he can get this piece of wood flying around. Well, <laughs> it did, but it really didn't do much. Looking at the 310 now. And he's still looking at an eight box. 85 through eight. Two marks for each team. Not much to choose so far. Spare, nice recovery for Paul St. Pierre. His first mark, third for the team. No, oh, but the fill ball gets off to the right again. That's the second time he's been off to the right on the first ball, and that time for just two. And that's a very unusual punch out as well, the three and the six. Yeah. You see that very often. Wonder how those two can go down without taking something else with it. And disappointing seven. So again, a mark, but it's really negated by the fill. All waiting it out, but <laughs> it's going to be a seven. His team leads by two, and we move to the final two frames of this first game. Neil Gosselin comes up a little bit short of the head pin. One, two, four left for Neil. Got it. Good shot by Neil. Right in the perfect spot. 
That evens the marks up, three apiece. Two spears and a strike for Goslin and Bolia, and three spears for St. Pierre and Reno. Oh, Neil got that one spinning down there. When he releases the ball, he puts a little yeah, spin on it. Really turns, turns the ball over. Ball breaks from right to left. Now he's gonna shoot at the 10 pin. Piece of wood in the channel next to it, but he's right on top of it. He'll stay right up there and fill that last mark. 104 in the ninth, 114 through 10, plus the bonus. And it's two, the half Worcester, 116. Steve Reno now. No, oh, big first ball leaves the solid nine. He crossed over nice and tight in the one two pocket. As Doug said, one pin left, that's the nine. Not anymore. Spare in the ninth. He needs at least seven to keep the match even. As in, as last year, should mention that the team that wins this match, this championship match. Watch out. Oh, oh, just missed. <laughs> It'll be a seven fill for Steve. The uh, team that wins this championship match and moves into the Tournament of Champions is automatically uh, excluded from doubles competition for the rest of the year until the Tournament of Champions, of course. All the other uh, bowlers are eligible to come back and keep coming back until they qualify for the tournament. But we should mention that Steve and Paul and Francis and Neil are all eligible still to compete on the singles show because you can actually qualify for both tournaments of champions at the end of the year. Two pins the difference, and that's been the kind of match it's been so far. Nothing really to choose between these two teams. Our championship match, it's tight so far. We'll be back in a minute. Here's Paul St. Pierre. The last time Paul was with us was in the doubles tournament of champions back in the spring. And he starts game two with a big strike. That's right. He was uh, toupled with one of them. Was it the Mor Morgan? Mike Morgan? You got a pretty good memory. Yeah. What did they do? Do you remember that? They won 399, 392, I believe. And then they came back and won 398, 370 something, 379, was it? And then I think they finally uh, lost 381 to 367 to hmm, Ashland and Vadney, was it? That's incredible. Amazing. Oops. I see. People at home say, I'm not paying attention. Well, you weren't. You were too busy reading my notes here. Oh. <laughs> Everybody's home say, he's amazing. I can remember all that. Oh, wow. How did the nine pins stay up? Covers the nine for the spare. Francis Bolia, mark number five for the team. Each team with five now. Yeah, the way Mike Morgan was going last year on both shows here on the wins, it looked like Mike and Paul might have a chance to come all the way up from the bottom and win the Tournament of Champions. There, we, you know, you just got through talking about they can qualify for both shows and the Tournament of Champions. There's a good example. Mike Morgan was in both. Is there anyone else? No, but uh, Mike Morgan, of course, was the number four seed in the singles Tournament of Champions and won the whole thing. He won four matches in a row. Ten box. How did the six pins stay up? That's how. Oh. So the lead now five for Goslin and Bullio. Here's Steve Reno. Well, let's see how he elects to play this. 
Two, four, seven on the left. The three, six with a piece of wood on the right. Steve shoots at the three and didn't gave, cut it quite enough. I would have gave the reset button a shot. <laughs> <laughs> and nine, 32. Ball there. Just the 610 left. One thing you have to watch out for here is that wood kind of rocketing by the 10 pin. And it doesn't. Okay. Steve puts the spare up, and that will bring Neil Gosselin back up to the line. Five pin stays up. He's got four pieces of wood near the five pin. Well, he might have to be very careful with this. He throws the ball hard enough. The ball might drive right straight through, but certain the wood's going to deaden it. Boy, that sounded like he broke a couple of them, <laughs> didn't it? <laughs> Spare in the third. Increases the lead by one more. Quick reminder that uh, next Sunday, November 8th, is our next taping session for Stars and Strikes Doubles here at the Londonderry Bowling Center, right off exit four, Route 93 in Londonderry. Oh my, one fill, just chopping out the, s the four pin. So next Sunday, if you're anywhere in the Londonderry area, we invite you to drop by and watch the show as it's taped live. Oh, he just picks out the three and the nine. Still looking at seven pins, one ball remaining now. Nice out with the eight. And we will pause right here. This match still very, very tight. In fact, the lead may change hands on the first ball when we return after these messages. Don't go away. St. Pierre throws something more than five on this mark. Team will take the lead, and they do with a seven. St. Pierre and Reno now lead. Ten box for Paul. Yeah, I see the game lead at four, and the match at two. Well, that looked like a pretty good light pocket hit in the one three, but look at the leave. Two five eight and ten with no wood. Paul pinning well, though, in those two boxes. Didn't have much to shoot at. Francis Bolia misses the head pin the first time, but didn't turn out too badly. Although, this it, won't be easy. No, he'd like the better angle than it would behind the head pin, but the 178. Good effort. I think what you see is what you're going to get. The whole match, it's going to be back and forth just within a few pins. Remember, $400 in prize money to the runners up, $800 to the winners. But more importantly, the winners can sit back and know that they will be here for the Tournament of Champions in the spring. Of course, keep in mind also that total pinfall is a factor here because the three string total will determine the seedings in the Tournament of Champions. And right now the scores are not what either of these teams would like to be, I'm sure. Single six pin. 
for the spare for Bolia. No. Now, Francis, a little distracted by that wood. It was still rocking a bit. Ten bucks. Picks up a pin. The lead is now one. Steve's been all over the head pin. 6-10 this time. Favorable piece of wood out in front. Two of them, actually. Probably play either one. Spare in the seventh. That is mark number seven for the team. This time, the three, seven, and nine. We've seen some interesting leaves in this match. Makeable shot, though, I, I believe. Hits the ball. The first piece of wood in the red line, the ball may take the seven. And then the second piece of wood could come off the wall for the nine. It's a little high. Use both pieces of wood. Great shot. He hits it a little higher and uses both pieces of wood for the seven pin. Neil Goslin hoping to match those two marks, and he'll have a shot at least in this box, with the 10 pin. Nice little guide there for him. Ooh, oh, wasn't such a nice little guide. Too far left. I wonder if Neil was intending to play off the wood or not. Probably not. He prob probably felt like I felt that if he missed it and missed it just a little bit to the left, the ball would carry him off the wood. Well, must have went too far left. Normally, uh, at least psychologically, it's a nice thing to have when you have that little pin there. It gives you a little perspective. You don't feel like you're shooting at one pin. No. This fires again. Well, chance for Paul St. Pierre to build a little lead going into this third game. Pair of nines on two uh, legitimate spare leaves there for Neil Goslin. And he's not happy as he comes back. Working on a spare. How about that for a punch out? The one, seven, eight, nine. Paul's probably saying, yeah, how about it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how about it? You want to come here and shoot? shoot? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this will be a nice out. A nine. Through completed frames, the lead is 14 in the match. And now the two pin goes out. Wait a minute, there's one missing in the rack, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good effort. Light it to the left of the head pin. We've got a cluster of five. Opens a door for Fran Bolia to finish up with a couple marks and even it up again. 117, 231 through two for St. Pierre and, Re and Renault. Reno. Wow. <laughs> we crushed eight of them out of there. The four pin and the 10 pin never were touched. Try to snap the wood in front of the four pin. See if you can get it to go over and get the 10. That's what he wanted to try and do. It wasn't there. The lead remains at 14. Now the four horsemen and the eight pin with no wood.
Gave it a run. Yep. Can't quite take advantage of the open frames. Needs one of these to keep it at 14. Those back-to-back -back spares by Steve Reno in the seventh and eighth right now are the difference in the match. Make it 15 pin lead. Two 16. The two string total for Gosselin and Bolia. 231 for St. Pierre and Reno. 15 pins the lead, as Dan said. We've got one game to go to decide this series championship. We'll be back. Neil Gosselin starts the third game with a half Worcester. This is not a recording. <laughs> it's just been one of those kinds of matches. Almost gets it. Everything but the four pin for the spare. And a 10. Well, I'm sure the thoughts going through the minds of all four of the bowlers during the break was, I'm probably lucky to still be in this. <laughs> and so they're probably going to try and do whatever they can to make corrections or whatever to try and put some extra numbers up on the board here in this third game. This is always nice to draw first blood in this third game. Picking this 10 pin up for Mark, he looks good. Mark number seven for the team of Goslin and Bolia. Steve Reno now. Trying to protect the 15 pin advantage. Steve individually has probably been the guy of the four who's been on the head pin more often. This time a very difficult split. And a nine box. Fourteen pins. And a mark for the other team already posted. Off left, four horsemen right, plus the eight pin. There haven't been many clean, traditional spare leaves in this <laughs> match to this point. Bolos are either going full in the head pin or missing the head pin entirely which probably accounts for a lot of that. And again, leaves the head pin standing along with the 10. So there goes two more in the count. So the lead now is 12 minus the ball by Fran Bolio. Oh, that was a big one. Ooh. Somehow Solid the four man. pin, yeah. You're right, how did it stand up? So the lead is now three for St. Pierre and Reno. Oh. No, and a miss. Right. looking hit there. 4-8 left. Could as easily have been back-to-back -back strikes. Gets the spare this time, though. Well, pressure swings the other way now on Paul St. Pierre. Leading by three. And getting three. Ends up about a foot and a half behind the foul line. Even two feet, that's mm. quite a bit. Well, he'll have to mark here to 
maintain the lead probably. And again, comes up short. I think he put two fingers up expecting the half Worcester and he only got one. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but yeah, that's, that's how things are going right now. I can't even steal the extra pin for a half Worcester. <laughs> well, Jeffrey is losing the lead now. It'll be all even. But well, we will break right here and this last six boxes are gonna determine this thing. It's almost dead even here at this point. Goslin and Bolia against St. Pierre and Reno for the first spot in the Tri-State Megabucks Doubles Tournament of Champions. We'll be right back. Well, Neil Goslin is going to fill a spare here left by his partner. Fran Bolia and whatever the fill is, that'll be their lead. That's exactly it. Whatever he drops here will be the lead. At least through four completed frames of the final game. Championship week, first qualifier into the Tournament of Champions will come from these two teams. Now, the five, eight, and 10, let's see if he can carry him the ball off the wood for the 10 pin and the wood take the five and the eight. Yes, exactly what he did, two in a row. Big shot right there. Because Goslin and Bullier, of course, the team that has to post a score and then watch St. Pierre and Reno finish. So it's important for them to get the score posted, get into the clubhouse. 3-6-10 and the seven pin. Ooh, ball was fighting to break back to the left, but didn't get there, just missed the three pin. Nine and 81 through six, so this uh, puts it on Steve Reno a bit. Seven pin advantage, but they're opposite a spare six. Spare six, nine. Just coming up short of the head pin that time. Steve not happy. He'll shoot at the four horsemen left plus the nine in the back. A little full on it. Gives himself the four seven. Now the lead will be in to double figures. I don't know about that one. We may have to either. check that one later, but we'll call it a 10 for now. It was very close. Looked like the ball might have been in the air above the channel when it hit the, uh, the wood. Nothing but the seven. Now this is no walk in the park either because that wood is gonna snap away from the sidewall. Bear up in the sixth. That's their first mark in this third game. Do you believe that? Well, I'm just gonna play. Play the wood. I would. Why not? I would. Shoot at something you got six or eight inches to play with and something you gotta couple inches to play with. Well, got one of them. <laughs> Took a while. That ball also looked like it was in the air above the channel when it hit the wood. So a 10 box. We've scored that a 10 box, although. He was shooting at the five pin. Right, the, uh, the question I think would be on the seven pin because that ball was headed off the lane when it hit the wood. 
maybe spending some time reviewing the videotape here. <laughs> Especially if this match ends up being close. That is a nine and 100 through eight for the team. So that's an opening for St. Pierre and Reno. Oh, <laughs> he was way off target, but he got a tremendous break. And that was on a spare, Phil. He hit actually six and 10 and leaves himself the one, two, and three. And corrects at that time. Oh, and oh my, a cue shot. <laughs> Stick around, ball, help me. <laughs> you figured this ball was long gone, but deadened by the wood, kicked back by the second piece and gets the three pin. Oh, and he comes back. And wow. That's cashing in on two big breaks. Strike on spare, Paul St. Pierre throwing two huge marks right there. After his team had lost the lead, they now have it back with two frames to go. Oh, wow, Great ball by Neil Gosselin, and he's going to watch the wood roll by, too. Just to tease you. <laughs> the 5-10. Can be made. It's not on the same plane. That 5-pin is out a few inches. Can be cut over, but it's not an easy shot. And that is definitely a 9-box, as the ball clipped off the wood in the channel. Well, Neil Goslin needs a mark, and a big one. Hmm, be a tough one. Well, those uh, questionable 10 boxes we had earlier may be a uh, moot point now because Neil Gosselin and Francis Bolia unable to mark in the closing frames. They wind up with a 335, and uh, all that remains is for Steve Reno to just keep the ball on the lane here, and he will win it. He's working on a strike. And oh, that does close. it right there. That ball did it. That makes it 109, so they have already clinched the championship. I don't think they'll be real pleased with the final score, but <laughs> that's not important right now. I thought we were going to see another leave with the four horsemen. We had a whole bunch of those in this match. But instead, it's the one three ten. Oh, right oh. around the ten pin. Well, of course, that could have been a big mark because that uh, would have added to their total. It's a nine and a three string total of three forty nine for our number one seeds and champions, as it turns out. Paul St. Pierre and Steve Reno, 349. Neil Gosselin and Francis Bollier, 335. We'll be back to award the big prize money and talk to the bowlers right after these words. All right, we have our first qualifying team into the Tri-State Megabucks Doubles Tournament of Champions, which, of course, will come up in the spring. Let's, uh, first of all, though, introduce our runners-up for uh, this particular championship match, Francis Bolia and Neil Gosselin. We'll have them come on up. We have uh, checks for both of you as well. You'll be uh, splitting the second-place prize money, guys, of $400, and uh, our congratulations as well. It was uh, just kind of a strange match, and it really was decided the last few boxes. Well, we missed quite a few early, and they usually catch up to you. Huh? You can't miss them. It just seemed like neither team was really able to get on track to, uh, until right at the very end they put a few marks together. That was the difference. It was tough. It really was. I, I 
I don't think we had much going for us at the end there. I don't know. They bowled well at the end. That's what counted. Well, I'm sure you know that uh, this does give you the chance, though, to try and come back and, uh, and compete with us again later in the year. So we hope to see both of you again later in the season. Thanks very much. Thank you. And congratulations. Thanks, Francis. And thank you, too, Neil. We appreciate it. And now let's bring up our champions. We have Paul St. Pierre, we have Steve Reno, and we have checks, uh, $800 the total for the two of you. And uh, our congratulations. And now you can just sit back, enjoy it, come back in the spring when the weather's nice, nice again. That's nice, something to look forward to. Can't complain with that. It, uh, it happened late, though, for you guys. Yeah, I got lucky in that six blocks. I threw two lucky balls. <laughs> yeah, tell us about the ball right in the, right in the 6-10 pocket that you turned into a spare and then a strike on top of it. Well, it was the strike that did it for us. It was about time. We, we deserved the break. And we got it. Well, congratulations uh, to both of you. Uh, of course, we may still see both of you in singles competition uh, sometime yes. during the year, yes. but uh, we'll definitely see you in the spring for the Tournament of Champions, and I know you look forward to that. Sounds good. Cool. Can't right. wait. Can't Thanks, wait. Thanks, guys. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you very Steve much. Reno and Paul St. Pierre, our champions. Congratulations. And uh, well, let's bring Dan Murphy in. We got another champion here off to my left. We'll bring him in, too. And uh, that's it. We've got uh, our first team, the, the total score, 349. It'll be interesting to see what what that places them uh, in the final uh, setting when everything is all said and done, the final six teams that qualify. But uh, right now, the important thing is they're there. They don't have to worry about it. That's right. You can never tell. This is a, uh, compared to Park Place, probably a lower scoring house. So you never know where 349 is going to rank them as far as tournament champions. But they're there. That's the big thing. All right. Here's a reminder. Next Sunday, we start two brand new series here on the wins. First of all, next Sunday at 12 noon, five brand new bowlers, a brand new singles series. And then next Sunday here on Stars and Strikes Doubles at 5 p.m., we'll have five brand new teams and continue the competition here in Stars and Strikes Doubles. Until next week, for Dan Murphy and the whole TB50 crew, I'm Doug Brown. Have a good week, everybody.